This is the companion lecture for the uh, trolling reading. So this one's interesting. It's a relatively long paper uh, that I asked you to read, but it should be fairly easy and accessible to read because it's like a popular, it was written for a popular magazine, so it's not really academic and super dense. So hopefully it was an interesting reading for you. Today I'm going to focus in more on some of the underlying things. We're going to talk about trolls because they, it doesn't really too much, I, to find them, so I want to make sure we have a shared understanding of what a troll is, because one of the important things I want to say in this lecture is adding to what he said is giving a more philosophical bent to it. He was more just kind of pop culture and news and maybe a little bit of sociology there about what the phenomenon of trolls is for people who really aren't, haven't been exposed to it and don't know what it is. Um, I want to apply some philosophy, some philosophical understanding to give you uh, an importantly different perspective on trolls and why trolling uh, might be appreciably and importantly different than trolls. And then we can talk, talk through the comments um, about the, the best responses to trolls, just like we did if you've watched my, uh, my lecture on bullshitters, right? Um, or uh, Clifford talking about reacting to people who are gullible and stuff like that. We're gonna t talk a little bit here or share ideas about and, and I'm going to share my opinion about what is the best tactic uh, when you are um, in a discussion with a troll. All right. So first thing, what's a troll? Well, there's a variety of different ways that we use this word, right? Um, it used to be it, it only meant it only meant an actual mythical creature, Scandinavian myths, lived under bridges, asked people riddles, stole their shit, right? That that's what a troll used to be, and then they got cutesy right for young kids but the kind of troll that we're talking about is probably the trolls you guys are might be already pretty familiar with this stuff right so I'm I'm expecting that even though this was a long read a long article and you probably did definitely learn stuff that you already know about trolls and they don't just happen online though of course we live in an online world now so that's where they mostly show up but like they, they happen in real life too, right? This is part of the reason why high school for some people was truly miserable, was not just bullies, but a specific kind of bully, right? That trolls are seem highly related to bullies, though maybe different. We're not gonna talk about any kind of distinctions. I'm not gonna talk about bullies in this lecture, weren't talked about in the readings, but trolls are a, a different kind of animal than a bully, but they there are relations there, right? And trolls often do bully people, right? Um, but they themselves are not the same thing as bullies. Okay, so what what is a troll? Well, the article gives you a, mentions a couple, right? And so it talks about Fortuny, and spends a lot of time interviewing him. But another one that they mention is maybe one of the most famous, um, and that is Andrew Warnheimer or Weave. And the, the, I got the I got the t the title card there I think from a Time magazine uh, interview or a perspective on Weave and all these other pictures I just picked up on the net including the mugshot because um, he is uh, a criminal he's done some criminal things um, kind of associated with his trolling activity um, but he is a thoroughly unpleasant individual and a bad human being he's a garbage human being um, but like the if if you can search up the i don't have the the reference for it offhand if somebody wants the url just post a question and i'll make sure to go find it again so that you can see the the interview where that title card is from um he seems to be kind of a pretty engaging and pleasant and funny guy who just does a bunch of terrible things he really is a garbage human being as you can see from the upper right picture there um there's some memes going on there, uh, both on the wall behind him, but also on him himself. And uh, if you do any research, if you just uh, search Weave, the top results are going to tell you what kind of person he is. He's not cool, right? Um, and in fact, he is much more uh, infamous than Fortuny is. If you Google Fortuny, pretty much the only result that you're going to get of substance is the reading that we did for this class. Um, but I picked a reading where that talked about Fortuny because I liked the way that the, all the other stuff that was in the, the reading. Um, and Weave would get into just more just kind of historical facts. He's much more complicated and involved to learn about. So I like this reading better. But, but Weave is like the prototypical ideal form 
of a troll. He, Fortuny is an amateur compared to this guy. But what is in common between Weave and Fortuny and all the other trolls, the amateurs, the part-timers that, uh, that the article talks about, is that they are basically doing it for the lulls, right? And lulls is a piece of vocabulary. Maybe you're not familiar with it. I probably a large percentage of you are. That just means they get their kicks, they get their shits and giggles from doing trollish things. And for a large portion of them, what that means is pranks. Uh, but they have a really weird idea of what constitutes a prank. Because the pranks, the kinds of things that they do, sound in certain descriptions, hey, it's just harmless fun, we're just poking fun at people, we're just, you know, trying to tell people not to, you know, be such, to have such big large sticks up their ass and stuff like that. And so, you know, they can describe what they're doing fairly innocently, but it's really not, or at least it doesn't stay that way very long. Trolls get into some seriously dark sorts of pranks, including, but not limited to, things like swatting, right? So, whereas, you know, trolling somebody might have um, started out as, oh, well, let's phone in a pizza order uh, on this person so that, you know, randomly one night they get a delivery of 10 pizzas and that pisses off both the pizza shop and pisses off them and it's all now awkward for that person and you can g giggle at them, giggle at the idea of you doing that to them, right? That's trolling. Uh, Swatting is different because it can and has gotten people killed. And it has gotten the people who call the SWAT down uh, in jail. Um, and so you can see I've got a variety of news stories here. Just Google swatting and you will see these results plus lots of other ones, right? Um, there have even been SWATs that have, um, that have happened online. Twitch streamers have been swatted. And so the police have entered violently uh, their their, their home, their residence, um, on live on the stream, and some of the people in the chat uh, of the Twitch stream um, are the trolls who called it in, and they're giggling and stuff like that. Now, usually, um, these things don't end well for the for the swatters. Police are getting more educated about this stuff, but it's still happening, and it's still it's still terrible. In case you don't know what swatting is, it's probably too late for me to explain it now. You probably already dropped comments and questions, right? Um, go back and and delete those or say that you had them answered by, by this part of my, my video. But swatting is when you call 911 and pretend to be at some, at, at, the, at the person you're pranking's residence and say that either there's a, a stranger in the house with a gun or that you have a gun and you are holding people hostage and, uh, and, and you want to kill them, right? And then that triggers a, a very, um, assertive police response that brings out the SWAT team that brings out the guys in body armor and and with with the um, with rifles and stuff like that and and riot shields like the picture in here and it's very awkward when cops are primed to go into a situation that they think is one way for someone who has absolutely no idea of what's going on uh, to respond appropriately so that they don't get killed by the cops because the cops are not going to believe you when you say nothing's wrong because they're going to be deeply confused and cops are not legendarily nimble on their feet when they're prepped to go into this kind of situation. So it's super dangerous. That's what swatting is. Um, and this is one of the things that trolls do and it's hilarious for them. Now, one of the things, so I haven't seen, a, at the time of recording this video, I haven't seen your comments in Perusall when they talk about these kinds of activities. I'm anticipating that the kinds of comments that you're going to have are going to be um, lots of things about how terrible these people are, right? But the perspective that the, that the article goes by is represented by Fortuny, the focus troll of the article, right? Is that this is all about both um, being amused myself, but also doing these kinds of things um, as a kind of a teachable moment to the victims that what's really at fault here is not the fact that um, that I said something nasty about you or pranked you or whatever. Um, it's that you reacted the way that you did. That's the real lesson to be learned here is not that I should stop doing what I'm doing, but that you should stop doing what you're doing, right? Um, that and and I think one particular episode in the in the in the reading is really kind of illustrative of this, and that's when Fortuny first asks the, his interviewer, hey, 
what's up with the green hair? And the reporter just kind of like scratches his head and goes, I don't have green hair, right? So calls him out on that lie. The lie was obviously obvious, right? Um, but doesn't get worked up about it. But then a couple minutes later, Fortuny says, yeah, you're a shit reporter. And the reporter uh, reacts a little bit differently. Doesn't react with rage or anything like that, but not with a casual denial, right? The reporter gets concerned. Wait, why would you say that? What What about me? What have you What have you heard, right? Because they obviously take pride in their work, right? And uh, and are uh, open to criticism about it because they take pride in their work, and so they take that lie way more seriously. And we might say they got triggered by that question in a way that they didn't by green hair. And Fortuny thinks this is a very interesting reaction and, and, and provides some insight here. And the, and the insight that Fortuny takes from this episode is not just that, you know, well, one was an obvious lie and the other one was, you know, impugning somebody's character, uh, but that uh, the reporter is way too serious about his job. And the lesson to be learned is stop being so uptight about that shit, right? And relax. Why, why, are you, why so serious? Why can't you take a joke about that stuff the, the way that you are were dismissive and not worked up when I um, talked about your hair incorrectly, right? Um, which is weird, right? Um, but part of this is that, that that idea they have that, look, the problem here is not me. It is you. And... The problem here is not that my jokes are not funny to you. Well, actually, that is the problem. The jo my jokes are jokes. They are funny. They're objectively funny. I laugh at them. I get lulls out of these things. And the, part of the reason why I laugh at them is because you don't, right? And I'm anticipating lots and lots of comments in Prusol, right, about the psychology of these trolls. These people are sick. I can't believe people do these kinds of things to other people who you know, innocent people, strangers, trolls will pick on and mob and tease and prank and they're doing it for the lulls, right? And they're just garbage human beings like Weave and like Fortuny and so you have a, might have a pretty dim view of their psychology. Now, I'm not qualified to talk about the psychology of trolls. Uh, I don't disagree with you about anything probably that you're saying in the comments. These people are deeply damaged and Fortuny kind of reveals maybe in his own childhood the source of his perspective on life and what shaped his psychology. But because I am a trained philosopher, I do have a philosophical perspective on this, which I think will complement the kind of psychological reactions we all have to this um, and help explain maybe even more effectively how to understand trolls and where this behavior comes from and also maybe how to react to it better. Okay, and that is a distinction, right? So uh, this is an old slide that I had in one of my orientations or intro kind of slides, right? Um, that the sciences like psychology are empirical, right? But philosophy is conceptual. So I'm gonna apply some kind of conceptual thinking about trolls here to try and extract some um, more refined understandings of what a troll is, what their perspective on, on, on the world is, and hopefully, I'm hoping you'll agree by the end of this lecture that, that you've un, you understand trolls better, which will help and will, will help the scientists understand them better, but it will also help you um, account for and predict trolling when it happens, recognize it better, react to it better, understand it better when, unfortunately I'm gonna say when, not if, when it happens, when you encounter it in real life, okay? And the key insight, the philosophical insight that I'm going to give you, hopefully you agree it counts as an insight and not just information, um, is that trolls are investing themselves, for one reason or another, into a philosophical outlook called nihilism. Nihilism is a philosophical attitude and approach to life that um, life is basically meaningless, right? That um, there is not much rhyme or reason to what goes on, that life is not fair and that nobody should expect it to be, and that all of this is just crap. And 
one of the colloquial ways that trolls or other people will express this attitude, this this um, this realization, this alleged realization about the way the, the real nature of the world, is they will say that they have been black pilled, and that comes from the movie The Matrix. So hopefully everybody here has seen The Matrix, just just the first one. There's only one Matrix movie, right? Just one, just one, um, and in that movie. Of course, I'm not spoiling anything here because you already should have seen it, right? In that movie, we have Keanu Reeves, a young and not grisly and old uh, Keanu Reeves, who is the main character, and they are, unbeknownst to themselves at the start of the film, trapped in a, in, in a simulation. And Orpheus, uh, sorry, Morpheus, the uh, other kind of main character in the movie, um, gives them the opportunity to realize that they're in a simulation and presents that opportunity um, to Keanu Reeves' character, Neo, as choosing between two different colored pills. And he says, look, if you want to know what reality is like, you're gonna choose the red pill. If you just wanna go back to your day job and stuff like that and stop asking all these awkward questions, uh, pick the blue pill. And so um, there's a group of, of people out there, um, misogynists and racists and stuff like that, who say that they have been red pilled, that they, um, have now learned about conspiracy theories. We're going to talk about conspiracy theories in Reading 10, right? Um, lots of those people will say, um, I have been red-pilled. I have taken the red pill. I am now awake to reality. I am not blue-pilled. I'm not a sheeple, right? Trolls will often say that even red-pilled people don't understand what reality is like. That the red pill is not, the, the magic key is not what happens the real red pill is the black pill and that is the realization that uh, once you take the red pill and you understand kind of how how rigged the game is for the common man um, how unfair life is and all that kind of stuff that the natural transition then is to realize once you've woken up that really the pill you take is the black pill and that is that real life is so depressing and out of your control and everything that it doesn't matter whether you took that red pill and allegedly awoke, right, to these um, evil forces controlling reality, or whether you took the blue pill and stayed as a blissfully ignorant sheeple person, right, um, that you're screwed either way, and that it's the black-pilled people who know reality, but but know that it doesn't matter, and that you could be a blue pillar or a red pillar, and I, both of those people are in an important sense being mis misleading themselves about the nature of reality, right? And that's revealed right in this in, in that Jason Fortuny quote I have I have down here right he's like look this is what life is life is miserable life is full of arbitrary cruelty right um, I know this because I've lived it that's his hints that he didn't really have a pleasant uh, life as a, as a child growing up right and he thinks hey that's the way shit goes right uh, life is like this right um, you are deceiving yourself if you think life isn't like this. And uh, I'm doing you a public service by um, exposing you, by blackpilling you, uh, hopefully, right? By showing you that the world is this caring, this, this place that is heartless and vicious and cruel, right? And I've actually got, I kind of just whipped up a short little argument that they might, that they might agree with, that they might present to you, right? Um, they have this fundamental commitment that, that life is meaningless, right? They, they've reached that either through personal life experience like Fortuny or gradually through first becoming quote unquote red pilled and awoken to certain things that are out of their control but kept on going on that trajectory and then becoming black pilled, right? And of course, meaningless things don't matter, right? You shouldn't get invested in meaningless things, which means that if you have both of those two claims, they form one reason to believe that only suckers or idiots do care about stuff because it's a, a sucker thing, it's an idiotic thing to care about things that are meaningless, right? Because they don't matter. Um, and therefore, the conclusion of the argument is that we, us black-pilled, truly awake people, um, can't, can't find joy anywhere. So if you want to find, because nothing else matters, right? So you, usually you find joy in things that matters in, in that sense of satisfaction of doing important consequential things but if nothing matters if nothing's consequential then um, entertain yourself in this meaningless cruel depressing life by by you know finding joy in mocking people 
who are delusional and foolishly care about meaningless stuff. That's what motive, that's the worldview that trolls have um, for the most part. Maybe not the casual trolls, that, that they're still at the kind of the, hey, this is fun, um, finding out that I can do that, I have the power to, to swat somebody or to prank somebody, this is kind of cool that I can do this, that I can make somebody's life miserable. But if they live in that life and talk to trolls, then they will start to adopt this philosophy of nihilism. And then if they accept that, if they, if they get blackpilled, then they're pretty much really deep into the troll lifestyle because they're pretty deep into the troll philosophy, which is the philosophy of nihilism. And that explains that, that these people are not, you know, they're, they're not really, it's not so much that they're psychologically damaged, though psychological damage has things to do with it, right? But they are, like the Joker, right? They have a very solid and coherent perspective on life. Uh, we might think that it is inaccurate, right? But that's a perspective they have, and it's hard to argue people out of a coherent philosophy outlook perspective on things. It's important to appreciate that they've got it, but it might be impossible to actually fix it with those people, right? But this is, I think, I would argue, this is an important realization to have, that they have a particular distinctive philosophy that is part and parcel with their activities and with their psychology. You can't really appreciate that psychology unless you understand kind of the, the rational basis for it, right? So that's trolls. Trolls are thoroughly depressing and have turned themselves into garbage human beings because they've adopted this philosophy of nihilism. Now, there's some tension here though, because there are instances when good people troll. So it's a very real question if, if trolls can do good things. So I have a couple examples here. So one of them is super recent, and it's one that hopefully you already knew about. And that's Lil Nas X, right? Who's an, uh, an artist, a hip hop artist. And uh, he blew up very recently in the news because he took some, some Nikes and did some kind of aftermarket mods to them, right? And sold them for very high prices. And one suspects, not serious about this stuff, not serious about being the devil or anything like that, but knew this is great marketing for me, right? And of course it was, because it blew up. Christians freaked out about this guy. Um, and his stuff gave him lots of free publicity, and uh, and that was at least part of it. Was his he intended to tweak those people to quote unquote trigger them, and they got triggered, and he just sat back and laughed. Now you might not really think of Lil Nas X as a troll because he doesn't subscribe to the philosophy of nihilism, right? But he was trolling these people, right? Similarly, um, you might know about the hacker the loosely organized um, anarchic ha hacker group called Anonymous. Um, they have not been in the news super lately, but uh, in the 90s and the early aughts, they were involved in uh, instances of cyber activism, hacking into um, organizations that they um, had ideological objections to, like Scientology. They wanted to reveal that it was a sham religion and stuff like that, so they um, did certain campaigns of, that involved hacking and um, br bringing down websites and things like that to kind of um, to to accomplish some activism on that end. Um, but this one I think is super nice and and kind of weird, um, but it's a, a both hilarious and also a really good example of non trolls using the techniques of trolls to um, to accomplish some some good in the world. And that is, the, the story here is that um, in Germany, unfortunately, they have neo-Nazis. Um, and this German, this particular German town, um, which um, if you Google the, the headline and stuff, you'll be able to find the full, the full article that I took this from. Um, yearly Nazis parade through their town and they were really uncomfortable because their town had some historical connection to the Nazi party or something like that. Stupid. Um, but the town was really offensive. The town would really like this not to happen. And while certain aspects of neo-Nazism are actually illegal in Germany, right? So they don't have um, the kinds of broad blanket uh, free speech protections that Americans have. The kinds of 
parades uh, or other demonstrations or other speech that uh, Americans have to tolerate because of free speech laws here. They don't in Germany. But nevertheless, there are still certain things. It's not illegal to be a neo-Nazi, right, um, in Germany. Um, so there are still neo-Nazis there, and they still can put on parades that are legal and get permits and things like that. And so they do in this town, but this town's really ticked about this stuff. And of course, getting mad and worked up only serves to bring kind of bad attention to the problem and they didn't want to have that and it only serves to encourage the neo-nazis because they themselves are holding these parades in part to raise their profile and in part to troll and victimize people who they oppose who their philosophy thinks you know maybe you ought to be dead says their philosophy and they because they're all a bunch of cowards um think that the best way to do that is to parade and be in your face to people who, who object to, to, to Nazism. So the townsfolk came up with a really clever response here, and that is that they started a charity. And the charity that they started was to raise money for every step, to have people pledge money for every step these neo-Nazis took on the parade route through their town. Right? So local businesses and residents signed up to pledge to donate a certain amount of money based on how far the parade went through the town. And so that's why I picked this image right here, because we got the police there keeping the peace and keeping counter protesters away from the neo-Nazis and stuff like that. But this message spray painted on the ground here is part of the parade route. And this was spray painted down there by the townsfolk and what it says in, in, in German, what it says is thank you for 2,500 euros. Because that's the line if the parade reaches that point where given the pledges that people made in the town, um, the town has earned 2,500 euros to donate to anti-racism, anti-Nazi um, charities doing good work in the community. Right? And so they had these lines all throughout the thing. And so now you're giving the neo-Nazis a really awkward choice. Have your parade, try and get that publicity and tweak us with the existence of your parade. But as you are doing that very thing, you are responsible for donations to charities that are fighting you. So you're hurting yourself. Stop hitting yourself in the face, right? Or stop having a parade in our town, go away. Right? So you've given the neo-Nazis a very awkward choice about what they should do. And in either case, they lose. That's trolling. But I'm going to argue that the people of the town and Little Nas X and Anonymous and the Anons in Anonymous are not themselves trolls. What they are doing is just borrowing some of the tactics. And so trolls can't do good because they fundamentally subscribe to nihilism and nothing matters and you should make fun of people who care about things. But that people who care about things can take some of their tactics and use them to further their own non-troll, non-nihilist um, priorities and values, right? Just like Lil Nas X did. So I'm gonna try and argue here and illustrate what I think is the distinction between trolls what people are, what they believe. So for me, my definition of troll is they subscribe to some appreciable degree to the philosophy of nihilism, that nothing matters and that one should therefore make fun of people who care about things, right? And trolling, which is an activity, which trolls often do, which is to make fun about people who care about stuff, but non-trolls can make fun of people who care about stuff for the stuff they care about, just like the townsfolk made fun of neo-Nazis for caring about Nazism. That's at root what they were doing. And what they were doing with that trolling activity, right, was challenging the values of the neo-Nazis by making it painful to neo-Nazis to do the thing they cared about. That's what trolling is, right? So trolls devalue any caring. Trolling is something that trolls do, but you don't have to be a troll to do it, right? It makes it painful to care about the thing that I'm trolling you about. That's what trolling does, right? And on the other side, it's either only mildly irritating to people who aren't neo-Nazis. Like, so if I didn't even know what neo-Nazism was or whatever, then the, the activities that the trolling is engaged in really don't 
impact my life because they just spray painted they just spray painted lines on the ground right uh they're not disrupting my life right um that's at the worst as an innocent bystander i am mildly irritated by what the trolling is doing in my environment right but on the upside the positive thing is that it makes it absolutely hilarious even to mildly interested bystanders right um what is happening here right because um if I oppose the values that are being trolled, if I oppose Nazism, this episode is hilarious because I appreciate the irony uh, in hurting these people for the very things that they care about by exploiting the fact that they care about those things, right? And in contra trolling is a variety of protesting, right? But it's not itself the same thing as protesting because there's lots of protesting that's definitely not trolling though they can look similar sometimes, right? Protesting isn't about making it painful to care about a particular thing. Protesting aims to make it painful to not care about that thing, right? So protesters have their own parades, right? To get publicity, but also to disrupt normal life, to make it uncomfortable to go about your business when your normal course of business is doesn't involve caring that, about that thing. So I have here images of a variety of different protests, right? So part of it is increasing the visibility of your cause in an attempt to kind of like get people on your side, but also to make it painful to accept the status quo, right? The a protest parade disrupts the flow of traffic. So if I just want to not be affected by this stuff because I happen not to care about the protest topic, you're making it hard for me to go about my usual life. You're disrupting my usual life. Um, you've got the implied threat that these protests and parades and disruption in my life are going to keep happening until the thing that you are protesting about gets fixed, right? Because you're angry and you're not going to take it anymore, right? Um, I could have put pictures, say, of Colin Kaepernick kneeling here, right? That was a protest. Now, it wasn't just, it was not like breaking up things. It wasn't he wasn't holding up a placard or anything like that, but it was disrupting the status quo for football fans, right? Um, their status quo involved the, the expected pregame routine stuff, and he wasn't participating in that. He was protesting it, um, making it painful for people to accept the status quo, making enjoying football more difficult for those people um, who didn't care about the thing that he was protesting. Now, if you care about the things that Michael that, that Ka Colin Kaepernick was protesting, then his kneeling during the national anthem didn't disrupt your experience of it, right? And so that's what made it a kind of a good protest in the sense of accomplishing the things that he set out to do, right? Um, maybe not good in that, you know, it, it got him not hired by any other football team afterwards, but protesting. So protesting is different than trolling, right? Protesting, though... Um, there are definitely ways to troll things by not standing for the national but it's about the kind of the way you go about it right the tactic of trolling is going to be slightly different than just straight up protesting because they have different ways of making political statements different ends and and they're 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 picking on different things to to pull on to use to try and advocate for whatever it is that they're advocating for so now we get to the, the denouement of the lecture. How do, when we're confronted with trolls, trolls, actual trolls, not just trolling people, right? But when we are dealing with trolls, that is people who subscribe to the philosophy of nihilism, what should we do? How should one react to these, these people? And, and I will say that often you don't know that they're a troll. Right? Because, of course, people only reveal their, their perspective on life through your observation of their behavior. Or if they tell you you're a troll, part of the um, thing about being a troll is that you don't tell anybody, hey, I'm going to troll you now. I'm a troll. Right? They just prank you. People just show up in your Twitter feed or something like that and start doing the kinds of things that trolls do. And sometimes that can look really close to legitimate um, interaction with people online. Right? They ask questions. They you know, offer observations. They just get involved in the discussion and the conversation that you're having online. And only gradually um, do you realize at some point, wait, this person does not actually give a shit about this conversation. They are here to basically prank, trigger somebody 
maybe me. And that, that's why they're here. They're not being sincere about this, right? And so first you have to detect the troll, right? Because our presumption is that everybody we meet cares about stuff. They're not nihilists, right? And so sometimes it takes a while to, to learn, oh shit, this person does not care about this topic. They are here for some completely different purpose, which is really juvenile, right? But at that point, what should you do, right? Should you get really angry? No, that's what the trolls are looking for, right? To trigger you, right? So you, that's probably not a reasonable option. So usually people say, well, just disengage, walk away. Hey, they're a troll. They don't care. Don't give them what they want. Say, no, actually, I'm not going to spend any more time on you. Leave, right? That's not a bad option. In certain circumstances, probably the best option to have. But I think the other option that we ought to contemplate, if one has the energy and kind of is in the right mental space, because sometimes these trolls, can, they're really good at their jobs, right? They're really good at triggering people. And so if you don't have the, the thick skin in that particular context, or you don't have the energy to engage with the troll, then you probably, it is the best bet to, to walk away. But the one thing that I would say is that there's another potential reaction out there which could involve more energy, but maybe doesn't need to. And that is to, instead of disengaging, be proud of the thing that you cared about, right? So when Fortuny kind of needles the reporter, right? With that insult about his reporting, right? The reporter reacts and says, well, wait, what do you mean? What have you heard, right? And then Fortuny starts kind of laughing at him and saying, man, I don't give a shit about your reporting quality. I just did that to trigger you, right? A potential reaction to have would be, Oh, okay. Thank you for pointing out that I care about my reporting. I think it's something worth caring about. And and you're the weird person for thinking that it's weird that I'm serious about this and that I care about it, right? Um, I think that in certain circumstances, that's effective, both because it's a way to validate for yourself and any other audience people that the weird person here is the troll and not you for caring about the thing that you care about. It reaffirms your personal identity, right? And maybe it helps that troll understand why they're weird, that they are being a nihilist because lots of trolls don't really appreciate this. Fortuny likes to think, for example, that he is operating on a higher uh, level of awareness, right? He's figured shit out about the world and he's teaching you that you don't understand the world. You haven't been blackpilled yet. You're blue-pilled, right? And he thinks that in his weird warped way that he, this is a, a teachable moment for you to, to realize that, that, that you're caring about stuff and you shouldn't. But when you encounter a troll, it's also a teachable moment if you can afford to take the time and energy to do it, to try to teach the troll actually your philosophy of nihilism is wrong uh, and we don't subscribe to it and we don't think that it's a, a good way to go through life it might not convince the troll but of course if you don't try then you don't succeed right um, and doing that also I think the more important thing though is not to kind of hold out hope that you can de-troll someone um, because if they're really into this stuff it's really not going to be like a, a zinger that gets them to realize that, that they ought to not be a troll. But I think the most effective part of being of demonstratively not being triggered, but seriously saying, okay, you triggered me, you got me. The reason you got me is because I care about this stuff. And uh, that's, that's good. Not just that's normal, right? But that's a good thing. It's a good thing to care about things and take them seriously because they matter. And that's not so much, you're not, while well, you may be speaking to the troll in that instant, you're not speaking because you're speaking to the troll. You're speaking to the audience, right? You want to help, if you can afford it, the, the thing that you're donating back to the conversation in those instances, in my perspective, is not a public service to the troll to try and get them to stop being a troll. It's to everybody else to give them the confidence to keep caring about the thing that you care about and not to be convinced by the troll that nihilism is the philosophy for them that they the philosophy that they currently have that the things that matter to them are worth mattering that that's if you can afford the energy to reaffirm that for your audience i think that's an important thing and that you should feel good about doing that
right? Because it's good to care about stuff if you're not a nihilist. It's only bad to care about stuff and to um, feel guilty or embarrassed about caring about stuff if you think caring about stuff is stupid, right? Um, so I would turn it back to the troll a little bit and say, I am proud of being triggered because being triggered shows that I care about this and I think it's correct. It is right to care about this topic. So thank you for showing me, not that I needed to be shown, that I care about this topic, but you're a really garbage human being, so you should stop doing this thing, <laughs> right? Um, I, I think that if you can afford to do that is a great way to respond to trolls. But if you can't afford to do that, it's just, oh, fuck, you're a troll. Get out of here and then leave and invite everybody else to leave too, because the troll is not adding anything to the conversation. All right. So in summary, and trying to connect it to some other readings that we've done, I think that the kind of the, the most obvious connection uh, to the topic of trolls and trolling um, is bullshitting and bullshitters, right? Um, because they are pretty similar in the sense that bullshitters pursue goals without concern for the truth. We learned that when we read Frankfurt and talked about Frankfurt. And trolls, similarly, they're really close together here. They aren't really concerned about the truth either, right? Their goal is not the truth. Their goal is pursuing the lulls, right? And caring for anything from their perspective is for idiots, right? And bullshitters, similarly, don't respect people who seek the truth, right? That the truth is irrelevant to bullshitters, right? They have lost the capacity to care about the truth, right? Um, this, the real similarity is in the consequences that both types of attitudes have towards critical thinking because they're both toxic to it. And the reason they're toxic to it is because they both deny one of the central commitments of a critical thinker, which is the truth matters and it is worth expending energy and crafting my thinking to make it better adhere to and follow and track the truth. Right? So both of these two kinds of people, bullshitters and trolls, are just not playing by the same rules as you and I. Right? They're not interested in the truth, in progress, in developing or increasing my understanding or anybody else's understanding who's involved in this discussion. And so because of that, they're playing a totally different game. And if they're successful, they totally derail what's usually happening which is a discussion to increase understanding. So they can poison that constructive environment for everybody else in the environment who does care about the truth or about increasing their understanding. And so they both need to be rejected in that way. And if you can, reject them in a way that revalidates why everybody else is there. Because it's good to have increased understanding about things and to expend effort towards that end. So you want to dismiss the troll, dismiss the bullshitter in a particular way, which is to, is to reject the worldviews or the presuppositions, the assumptions they bring to the table and say, that is not a good game to play. Mm -hmm. That is not worthwhile for any of us to join that game. Let's go back to the game we were playing successfully, constructively, which was pursuing the truth. Okay. All right. The next reading in this series, if you're reading things in order, is to look at the psychology of incompetence and obliviousness and how incompetence and obliviousness are connected.